Good afternoon. The 20-year-old chairman of the Illinois Black Panther Party, Fred Hampton, was shot and killed in a pre-dawn shootout with state's attorney's police on the, in his west side apartment. Another party member, 22-year-old Mark Clark of Peoria, also died in the shootout, which left four Panthers and two police officers wounded. State's attorney's police say they were fired upon when they tried to enter the apartment at 2337 West Monroe on a search warrant issued for possession of illegal weapons. Three more Panther Party members are in police custody in connection with the shooting. Officer Carmody, when you knocked on the door, what happened? Well, I didn't actually knock. I heard our officers at the front uh, announce their office and shots fired. Uh, so I kicked in the back door, and as soon as the door opened, uh, I could see uh, shots being fired at us at the back door. Was it lighted inside? Yes, the whole apartment, the, the kitchen was lit and the front room was lit. The bedrooms were dark. Did you know at that time approximately how many people were inside? No, we had no idea. Did you know that uh, they were Black Panthers? No, we didn't. We just knew that, or we were informed that there were guns and uh, contraband in the building. Did you have information that indicated that Fred Hampton might be there? Not to my knowledge. The raid on Hampton's apartment was conducted by the state's attorney's office, acting on a tip from an informant that there were Ill illegal guns there. That was the news report from WMAQ on December 5th, 1969, following the shooting death of Fred Hampton, the chair of the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party. He was shot and killed on December 4th of 69. Hampton shot in a raid by Chicago police who were executing a warrant for illegal guns. Police alleged it was a gun battle, but an investigation later revealed only one shot was fired by a Black Panther, a reflexive shot fired into the ceiling in response being shot and killed by police. This is the focus of the new critically acclaimed film, Judas and the Black Messiah. Here's a look. It's not a, it's not a question of violence or nonviolence. It's a question of resistance to fascism or non-existence within fascism. You can murder a liberator, but you can't murder liberation. You can murder a revolutionary, but you can't murder revolution. And you can murder a freedom fighter, but you can't murder freedom. Daniel Kaluuya there. Joining us now, activist Mother Akua, a former Black Panther who was Fred Hampton's fiance at the time of his death, and also with us, director, co-writer, and producer of the film, Shaka King. Good morning to you both. We so appreciate you being here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, everybody is talking about this film. Daniel Kaluuya just won the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor on Sunday night for the performance we just saw there. Shaka, let me begin with you. For people who don't know the full story of what happened on December December 4th, 1969, everything that led up to it, everything that came after it. What grabbed your attention about this story? Um, initially, what grabbed my attention about the story was the fact that I, you know, I'd never heard anything about William O'Neill, um, who was the FBI informant who, you know, infiltrated the Illinois chapter and is a, a drugged Chairman Fred Hampton and gave the FBI the blueprints to his apartment. So the story that I heard growing up um, was just that, you know, Fred Hampton was a Black Panther who'd been shot by the cops. I didn't realize it was an intricate assassination plot um, that had, you know, been essentially, you know, crafted by the most powerful, you know, government organization in the, in the country. Mother Akua, Gene Robinson's here with a question for you, Gene. Um, Mother, Mother Akua, um, I, I, maybe you could I explain to the audience who, who may not know, what was it about Fred Hampton that made him um, uh, deemed so dangerous, uh, so uh, so potentially dangerous uh, to the to the power structure in Chicago, um, the uh, nation's largest black community, and, and to the nation uh, in 1969? What was it about him? Well, the uh, federal government, uh, J. Edgar Hoover, FBI, had, had 
described the Black Panther Party as the greatest threat to the internal security of the country. And under the COINTELPRO program, Panther officers were attacked everywhere. Chairman Fred Hampton was, uh, his phones were tapped at his parents' house when he was about 13 or 14 years old by the FBI. So he was a tremendous organizer. He was a brilliant man. He was a powerful speaker. And also he was against the exploitation of oppressed people colonized in the U.S. and around the world. So he became a threat because he was able to uh, pull together a tremendous coalition, became known as the Rainbow Coalition, that began to unite various groups across uh, uh, various racial lines to um, fight against the attack that uh, we were experiencing in colonized communities all over the country. So the fear, uh, as the documents uh, show, the COINTELPRO documents show, the fear of a black messiah, someone that could electrify and unify the masses of people. And in that clip right there, you see the uh, bed where they came in and stood over Chairman Fred and shot him point blank after they had got uh, me and uh, everybody else out the room. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.